Good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Rick Wallace here. A little morning inspiration, uh, hoping to provide the impetus and uh, somewhat of a force to help you get your day off to a good start, to give you some insight on some things, uh, maybe a different perspective, a different viewpoint, a different focus. The first thing that I want to say immediately, right out of the box, is that we are where we are. Each and every last one of us are where we are because of things we have thought, done, and now we're reaping the uh, we're reaping we're reaping the repercussions of our thoughts. Let's just put it that way. Um, our thoughts create habits. Our habits create behavior. Our behavior and decisions dictate uh, where we go and how we end up. Uh, I just want to make sure that we always enter the day with a high level of accountability. One of the worst things that you can do is become a victim in this world where you're always pointing the finger and blaming someone for where you are at at this current moment. Uh, while it may have a, some sense of emotional satisfaction at the point in time you're doing it to blame someone, some people literally live their lives in the in, in, in the realm of uh, victimization. It doesn't mean that people aren't doing things to you. It doesn't mean that you haven't gone through some pretty awful times in your life. But the, mom the moment that and, uh, uh, a brother, uh, brother Elgin Bailey shared uh, this exact uh, thought earlier today, the moment that you begin to take accountability, I don't think he said it that way, but the moment you begin to take accountability, when you take ownership, and where you're at right now, that's the moment you begin the process of actually taking control of your life and changing it. You cannot change your life from the position of a victim. What I want to talk to you with here is the natural proclivity of a large sum of us or a large number of us always seeking comfort or always seeking an easier road or always looking for uh, a way uh, to make things easier, thinking that an easier way is going to produce a high level of success. Let me explain something to you. Whether you end up with the vast majority of your life being spent as a sufferer or you end up with the vast majority of your life ending up as a person who was successful and thrived and, and, and experienced life at a, an extremely and, and, and an astronomical level is not going to determine on the season. Whether you're successful or whether you're suffering has nothing to do with the season you're in. That's uh, an illusion. That's a myth. That's a lie. That's something that has been passed along down through generations that if you're in a tough season, it's a season of suffering. No, it's not whether you're in a season. What it, it's regardless. It's, it's regardless. It's, it's absolutely completely separate from what season you're in. The season just dictate, dictates the intensity in which life must be engaged. It has nothing to do with dictating whether or not you're going to be suffering or you're going to be successful. Uh, number one is let's, let's use seasons since I use the term season. Seasons. There are people who literally freeze to death during the winter. And there are other people who thrive in the cold and actually turn it into a, a, a time of enjoyment, skiing and uh, snowboarding and climbing mountains and doing all kind of things. The only difference is one person never prepared themselves for the season. The other person not only prepared themselves for the season, but embraced it, engaged it and adapted to it. So what happens is it's not the person uh, it, it's not the season you're in. It's your ability to get tougher. It's your ability to intensify. It's your ability to grow. It's your ability to, to gain strength from those seasonal moments that seem toughest are the time that you get the greatest elevation, the greatest thrust, the greatest power. Eagles fly into the wind. Planes fly into the wind. It's the resistance that creates the force that elevates you. Uh, if I were to ask the average person, what's the best time to get or start a business most of them will probably say when the economy is booming and everything like that well actually 65 percent of the fortune 500 actually started their businesses doing a depression or a recession apple computers microsoft disney fortune magazine a number of other different companies 
all 65% of the Fortune 500 started their companies during a recessed economy. So it's not the season. It's the it's it's the individual, it's the person. You're going to have seasons. You're going to have difficult moments. You're going to have times that 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 things aren't going right. That doesn't dictate whether you're a sufferer or whether you're successful. Your season has nothing to do whether you're suffering or successful. What you do in your season is going to determine whether you're suffering or whether you're successful. How you view the season is going to determine whether you're successful or whether you're suffering. If you're sitting up and you're waiting on that easy moment, that thing to just fall into place. So many people that I talk to are waiting on the right moment, are waiting on things to get better, are waiting on things to uh, line up. You've got to line it up. You've got to get in your, 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 your books. You've got to pull out your computer. You've got to start reading. You've got to get to the library. You've got to start understanding whatever it is you're trying to do in life. It's out there for you to learn. There are people who understand it. There are books about it. There's writing on the Internet. There's so many different ways that you prepare yourself for the season. You don't dictate the seasons. The seasons are going to change. They're coming. What you control is how you respond and prepare for the seasons. If a bad economic downturn comes and you're not prepared for it, yes, it's going to do you bad. But most of the wealthiest people in this world invest at a greater rate during crisis uh, economic crisis and financial crisis. They sit up and see the uh, market, not in a moment, but over the course of time. They understand that while the prices are dropping now, that if they sit right, if they buy now, I believe it was Ray Dalio, as a matter of fact, if they buy now while the market is down, they get uh, stocks at unbelievable prices and then they sit there and hold them and watch the correction return. The market over the last hundred years has had this pattern. It has a pattern where it's on a bull. It's, it's a bull market with, with stock prices and values being pushed up by a number of different indicators and influencers. And a lot of times it becomes inflated, meaning that the prices are actually higher in value than than they're actually worth. And then the market has this uncanny ability to turn around and correct itself. And when it corrects itself, when it first turns, the first 20 percent that it corrects itself is called a bull market. And that bull market is just a part of the natural correction. Now, there are times that it will go below that. And that bull market at that particular point in time will become, uh, I mean, a bear market. It becomes a bear market on the way down. And then that bear market will become a, 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 a recession. And then that recession can turn into a crisis when it reaches an 80% correction. But no matter how bad the correction on the downturn, it always comes back. And what I found is uh, there are people that are out there that they call crisis investors. They only buy and invest when the market goes down. I believe it was Ray Dalio who runs the largest hedge fund in the world, a $165 billion hedge fund. I believe it was him or either David Swanson. One of them said the stock market is the only place where when things go on sale, people panic. That's how investors, that's how people who are prepared for the season and understand seasonal uh, issues under uh, bill. When you look at the fact that 65% of your top performing companies in the world started started their companies in the midst of a recessed economy, it tells you it's not about the season. It's about the nerve. It's about the guts. It's about the willingness to get out there. It's about the uh, um, the inexorable desire to push through whatever happens. It's an it, it's about not being deterred by delay. It doesn't come in a minute. It doesn't come in an hour. It may take a couple of years, two or three, four or five. If it takes 10, if you get to the point of realizing your dream, that 10 years of fighting through was worth it. We want everything on the table right now. We microwave everything. We want it right now. We need immediate gratification and we never achieve anything of any substance because everything has to happen today. But again, I'm going to close this by simply saying, it is not the season you're in that's going to determine whether you're suffering or whether you're successful. It's going to be your ability to adjust, embrace, and engage the season with a level of toughness, fortitude, passion, preparation, and determination that you're not going to let go. You're not going to give up. You're not going to turn around. You're not going to sit up and allow the season to break you. You're going to use the resistance of the season to elevate you. You can't go into the gym and avoid resistance and build anything.
in the same way that works in your physiological uh, um, existence, it works in your spiritual, emotional, psychological, uh, and every other area of your life, your emotional, you ca you've got to be willing to engage it resistance with an expectation of coming out of it better than when you went in. That's that's pretty much it. You know, one thing that I've noticed and that that's something that as a culture and as a society, we're really and truly going to have to do better at. And that is the expectation of ease. Anytime that I talk about accountability, uh, the response is nowhere near the time that. You know, I may be talking about something that's a lot more uh, vivid and colorful. and But see, you don't get the vivid and colorful without the accountability. You want the promise without going through the process. Life doesn't happen that way. You're going through the process. And the problem is most of us, because we aren't prepared for the process and we don't embrace the process and we don't. Uh, understand the process we we spend our entire lives trying to circumvent the process and we never achieve anything of any substance and we end up going through the process anyway because it's unavoidable but it's miserable because we don't understand it we see some we go into so many things and we're miserable because simply because all of this culture, especially in the Western culture, has trained us to seek a life of ease, a life of comfort. If you ain't comfortable, you ain't you you're not growing if you're not being challenged. The moment that you stop trying to seek uh being better than you were yesterday, you stop growing. And when you stop growing, you lose ground. Why? Because everything in the world is advancing. And you can't you 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 can be the best at something today. And if you don't continue to grow at it, you won't be the best tomorrow because the world is growing and people around you are chasing the same dream, the same idea, the same concept. People are building on it. And if you sit there thinking that you can sit right here and, and on, on some pedestal you created in your own mind and be the best at it, you better be on your grind. You better be up every morning, better be studying, better be reading, better be looking, better be consulting, better be doing whatever you got to do to get the edge to be better. Not because you're competing with somebody else, but you're competing with yourself. This look, you have a reality and you have three realities and you can break them down into however many realities you want to. But let's just say right now we have three realities. You have where you think you are based on your ego. You have where you are physically and actually at. And you have where your potential has the capacity to take you. What you're competing against is the potential. The potential is saying, this is what I know I'm capable of based on what my potential presents. And what I can tell you is when you die, you'll still be chasing the, the full capacity of that potential. That's, way, that's the way we'll create it. Is, is that there's always room to grow. You're never perfect. You're never at your pinnacle. You are always got something that you can be better at. You always got something you suck at. That's the truth. But that should drive you. That should make you just want to go get it. The one thing I learned, and it's taken some time, you know, ego gets in the way. But it, it, it took some time. But the one thing I learned is the more I'm focused on being the best I can be, the less I have time to be judging and, 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 and down talking and belittling someone else. The more I search myself introspectively to see the, the orifice and the holes in my armor that need to be plugged with growth, the more it drives me to be a force of assistance instead of resistance, a force of elevation, empowerment, enlightenment, and encouragement than uh, a force of judgment. We have so much to learn, and I don't want to get off course, but look, stop letting your season dictate your mindset. You are built to strive and thrive in every season you just simply have to prepare for it and then you have to go out and get it 
That's it for now. As I always say, I'm going to die on E. I'm going out and I'm giving this thing everything I've got in every area of my life. And I'm encouraging you to do the same thing. I love you guys. I'm out of here. Peace.